hello everyone welcome to another infinite magic raid video today we are going to be looking at Maeve we know that recently Maeve was reworked uh, we are going to see how good is she now before now she used to be like really you could say she was a damage dealer but not she was never the main damage dealer in any team so basically she was there to apply some slumber on the boss and yeah, reduce the speed of the boss and that will give you and your team more turns and you could do more damage. But let's see if now she can actually be the star of the show, if she can actually be the main damage dealer. So uh, these are uh, reworked passives, are basic, reduce defense now. Uh, before I believe this is to apply slumber mark. And uh, now they are a new mark called Dazzle Mark. And if you get four of these Dazzle Mark, you get a permanent Slumber Mark before Slumber Mark expires. But now, after you get four Dazzle Mark and uh, from four hits against the opponent, and you can get that pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, once you get the, the four of them, you get this permanent Slumber Mark, which permanently reduces the bosses or the opponent's speed by 16%. And that cannot be cleaned. So, uh, yeah, that's really nice. For our exclusives, you can see I have her at E0, but for our exclusive, the first one is, is to, of course, it doesn't work for bosses because uh, she has to, uh, the enemy has to die, then she clears control effect. So, with, against waves, this could be nice. Uh, for our exclusive 2, at the beginning of Maeve's turn, if any enemy owns slumber mark, she gains stealth for 2 turns and attack up. So, yeah those two are nice attack up and stealth stealth of course you cannot be targeted by a single damage dealer uh and attack up you get to do more damage just like uh <laughs> what's the name of this epic just like this guy marking exactly just like marking so yeah for our exclusive three is just the same as before doing an extra stage of damage which of course for if she's going to be the main damage dealer she needs this exclusive three to do the extra damage but uh is that still enough? Let's just see what she can do at E0. But before that, let's check out her stats. 32k attack, not great, of course. You, for your main damage, you want to have over 40k attack. So 32 is not really a true test of this character. Uh, crit rate 101, which is basically you need just 100. Uh, then crit damage 265 could be more. Yeah, but those are the main stats she needs. And yeah, that's what we're going to work with for now. Let's check out her equipment. Yeah, I'm using slay sets on her. Some good drops, some good rolls, some bad rolls. But yeah, you can see this four star, five stars. I've always said it. I don't have the best of equipment and artifacts, but I work with what I have. Uh, so yeah, crit damage. Oh, sorry, crit rate, attack and speed. This could be attack as well if you want more attack on her. But I just prefer her not to be too slow, so that she can get more turns. And to me. I value speed over attack generally, over the 2k attack, but, but I could be wrong, that could probably do more damage for her, but I don't think it would be that much more. Uh, yeah, well, I could experiment with that and see what how that performs. Anyways, those are stats. Um, her emblem, this is the emblem I have on her, uh, crit rates and uh, crit damage and everything else in between. You can take a screenshot if you need. Uh, aura. I'm using Victory Rush maxed out. Uh, it's an elite aura. Increases your direct damage by 13.5%, which can be quite useful, especially against bosses. Uh, Echo. I'm using Exploding Arrow, <laughs> which is fitting because she uses an arrow. <laughs> so it gives me crit rate, and uh, the passive is that it increases the crit damage of uh, the character, which in this case is made by 12% when I enter the battle. And if my crit rate reaches 150%, it increases that crit damage by 28%. Uh, so basically, if I have a character that gives me extra 50% crit rate during the match, for example, I have one epic uh, that can do that for me. Where is this character? I think Lily. Uh, I feel like I'm going blind right now. <laughs> Lily, yeah, there she is. Lily. So she can give me an extra 50% crit from the yeah, active skill too. Okay, uh, yeah, 50%, exactly, 50% crit rate, 60% crit damage. So if I pair with this character, I'm going to get an, ad another additional 12% crit damage, which will do a lot for you, trust me. Uh, so 
where can we use MIF? Well, first of all, let's check out Wuthering Coast. This is the damage I did with her. Let's check out the team contributions. Yeah, let's check out my setup. I even have one more match to play. <laughs> totally forgot about that. Ah, uh, okay. So this is where I use her in the direct damage team. So before now, I use um, Agatha here instead of her. And I was doing 280, 290 million damage, but I never crossed 300. I added that today and even while simulating, I was able to cross 300 and during the actual fight, I got 308 million damage. So she marginally improved my damage for direct, for direct uh, damage team. Is that now worth building her? I would say at E0 still no, because the increase there is not that great. But I believe if she were E3, for example, yeah, then that would be amazing. So definitely for Wuthering Coast, if she gets up to E3, especially getting that extra thought stage of damage combined with Lily, I'm going to be doing about 350 million here. I'm pretty sure of that. So yeah, from what I'm seeing so far for Wuthering Coast, she definitely, she definitely needs to be E3. Yeah, so let's just do a couple of simulations and see what we can get with her. This direct damage, correct? So let's just pick up, pick with my direct damage team. Yeah. So skip. Let's see what we get. You see, she hit 50 million damage here. Uh, 274 in this instance. Let's try again. Uh, I was getting more of 300 in the morning. Right now, yeah, 300. Yeah. So yeah, she definitely helps my, my direct damage team at E0. But I think right now she could be replaced with my E1 Agatha and probably perform around the same. But at E3, 100%, she's definitely going to have a place in this team. So that's for Wuthering Coast. So let's check out uh, Guild Boss E6. Let's see how she performs. But so this is the team I set her up with. So this is supposed to be the perfect team for her because uh, Rista will help boost her crit damage and give her more attack. Uh, she gets increased direct damage boost uh, from Nereid, then from Heng E3. She also gets additional crit damage based on Heng's resistance. In my case, she'll be about 40% additional crit damage based on my resistance. And yeah, you would think she would do amazingly well, but at E0, <laughs> 18 million damage. That's very, very bad. That is very, very bad. So yeah it is six yeah i have not done more i've not done I've, with this setup i've not been able to hit 100 million so but i would think that at e3 with that extra stage of damage she definitely would do better than this but still not going to be what the uh to me that extra stage of damage if you calculate it it still doesn't at most it gets you over 100 so not great not amazing so not really good most boss material and even on watering coast, she's easily replaceable. If you have Ikina, you can replace her. If you have Agatha, decently built, you can replace her. If you have any decent damage dealer, honestly, you can replace her. Uh, so, but where she would shine would be Faction Abyss in Foresters. Foresters don't have, uh, or at least for me, I don't have some amazing damage dealers here. So you can see that just her and Megan. So I would think that at E3, at the very least, she would be very good here. And in fact, she took me up to 17 with, yeah, with Luna. It was just her and Luna before I dropped Luna for Nerud. So she, it, I only used two characters to get up to 16. Uh, Maeve E0. And that was even before the update. After the update, I no longer have Luna. So I don't know what she can do here, honestly. But I would think that she'll be able to push at least to 20 with a good team around her. So yeah, she and Megan. Yeah, would work very well here then with Farrell or Fanel for protection. Anyways, yeah, she definitely would be good at least for the early stages of Faction Abyss. So if you need the damage dealer in Foresters, uh, even at E0, she can do well for you. Just combine her with Luna and Fanel and you're good. Uh, Tower of Mark is where I believe she has a most use, a best use against this boss, Floor 27. Because this boss, you need a direct damage dealer against him. The only issue with this boss is that I try to auto and I have not been able to find the combination that can auto this boss because 
she keeps targeting the sub bosses she never targets the boss so i don't even think that she can work very well in in the case this boss on auto but if you manual it definitely she can if pair with some aoe damage dealers and yeah the web clear the wave she took can clear the wave on her own as well but yeah it will take a bit of time which i'm not going to spend on this video <laughs> but yeah she can definitely take 27 in fact that's the best use for her 27 but let's just see how she performs let's auto 29 yeah 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 let's auto 29 let's see how she performs in tower of mac so if I go to manual it, then yes, use her on 27, focus only on the boss and you are good. Uh, Green Tower has a lot of protection characters. You have Hang, you have Nodak, you have uh, Space for Speed, you have been Austin for Pursue. Uh, you have even, uh, there are a lot of good epics that you can use to, for protection. So Green Mark is actually pretty stacked in this game. So you're not going to have any issues with protection. But what you need, especially for 27, is that direct damage dealer. So, yeah, she works quite well. You can see she's doing some good amount of damage. You see, just now she hit 394k on three instances, which is about 1.2 million. But if she, well, E3 should have had an additional 394, which would have taken her to 1.5 million. Yeah, so, or 1.6, rather, 1.6 million. So, you see that there are some damage we are missing out on because she's just E0, but I still feel, like I said, even that extra stage of damage just makes her marginally better. It doesn't now make her OP. There's some characters, let me give you guys an example. There's some characters like Ikina. Ikina, for example, is, is in fact, Ikina is the perfect example of character that at E0, she's trash. Not 100% not trash, but yeah, you get the point. She's not great at, is, at E0. But at E3, she's actually amazing one of the best that is direct damage dealer in the game so ikina is one character that if you have ikina uh if you really want to use her don't upgrade her gradually i would say save up three legend three dragon eyes uh legend dragon eyes or maybe when you drop an additional copy of her uh, yeah so just make sure you have enough to take her to e3 so yeah at e0 just keep her on the bench but at E3, yeah, she starts doing amazing damage against Guild Boss and in Wuthering Coast. Yeah, so I hope to get three Legend Dragon Eyes before the end of this year. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, of course, for people like us, we have to wait for a very long time to get things like that. Yeah, but you can see, yeah, back to Maeve. Maeve is actually doing pretty well. Uh, she has a lot of buffs, so she should be doing well. Uh, she has boss from Heng, uh, that is crit damage from Heng. Uh, yeah, okay. That's basically the only buff she has. <laughs> but yeah, the crit, okay, not just crit damage, she has skill up. Yeah, that skill up also does very well for her. So, very much able to do 27, 28, 29. She can take care of those for you. Like, even if you don't have hairs, you can take care of those three modes. Where you now need hairs or, or Creon or any other AoE damage dealer will be against 30 because 30 requires you have aoe so that's why i recommend her for 27 28 and 29 anyways that's about it for the video guys if you enjoy my videos smash the subscribe button and i'll see you guys on the next one